Oh, hello. We didn't see you there. Welcome to our living room here at St. Bridget of Sweden Parish. I'm Father Anthony Federico, of course, with Pastor Father Romans. And you just missed, by 30 seconds, Father Romans, the human jukebox, singing his latest song of the day. Just before we went live, he was singing Piano Man by Billy Joel. Before that, we had some uh, Gloria and Excelsis Deo from the Latin Mass. And then throughout the week, it's been a little Frank Sinatra here and there. And Father has had a song in his heart lately. I have. Because I think it's because we're sensing the end, God willing. We're getting a little closer to the end, and that joy is starting to spring back in our hearts. So we welcome you to another episode of Casual Conversations with your priests. We invite all your questions. We want to have a nice, fun dialogue with you again. Father, welcome aboard. Hello and welcome, everyone, to our living room. It's always great to have you joining us virtually here. Uh, we never know what questions you're going to raise, so we're always excited to see what's going on in the community and what questions are on your minds and on your hearts. And we really enjoy these casual conversations and uh, spending time with you and answering your questions, helping you to get to know us a little bit more. If you hear the phone ringing, it's because uh, about 12.30, 12.25 to be exact, I sent out a robocall. Uh, which I haven't done since Easter Saturday, Holy Saturday. Um, and I just wanted to send it out because this weekend is Good Shepherd Sunday, Father. Right. And as their shepherd, we wanted to send out a note, letting them know that we're still thinking and praying for them during this time of pandemic. So these are people that are getting the call and having a missed call on their cell phone and not listening to the message. What do you think about the DNA so they're feature? Calling, yeah. They should so they're calling to see, uh, you know, I received a missed call from this number. What's going on? And then we tell them who we are. That we just wanted to let everyone know that we're praying and thinking of you and they say oh that's so nice thank you have a good day only about 25 today not bad yeah Either the way. first time that we did it, it i was on the phone for a good half hour straight non-stop both lines going father had been gone out for an errand and i'm like i should have waited till he was back <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine father romans with two phones in his ear uh, welcome to say pretty sweet what can i do for you back and forth he's like his own receptionist these days I was, yes well sometimes we have to be ready that's right so we already have two questions, Father. I bet one of them is from our resident theologian, our junior theologian. Let me guess. Mitchell? Yes. Patrick Mitchell starting us off with two questions. All right, junior theologian Pat Mitchell, what do we got? He always has a two-part question. These are two separate questions. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on the many different Bible translations? There are some Bible translations that many Catholic scholars accept but we're not approved by the USCCB. For example, I have the Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition, which is not approved, but is widely acclaimed by many scholars. That's his first question. Wow. So I would say, Patrick, that it, you're better off always, uh, at least for personal prayer, to use the approved translations. If you're studying a scripture passage and you really want to delve into it and see what the different translations say, then by all means, there's no harm in having the other versions, but your your go-to Bible should be one that is approved by the USCCB for use in the United States. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. You can benefit from different turns of phrase in other editions, but stick with what the church teaches and you can't go wrong. Absolutely. Uh, his second question, Father, is going to be very hard for you to answer. Oh, boy. What's your favorite ice cream? <laughs> I can tell you straight up, mine is strawberry. Absolutely, hands down. It only gets beat once in a while with something that has peanut butter in it, but mm -hmm. strawberry, strawberry, strawberry. I like Rocky Road. I love that little touch of marshmallow in there. And at the moment, we have two kinds of ice cream here at our house. We have one strawberry Amen. and then one like mocha fudge thing, which we've uh, been enjoying, I should say. I've been enjoying <laughs> Well, it doesn't often have dessert. But. Strawberry one hasn't been touched, and it's been in the freezer in about two months. Oh, I think I, I got it right. I when can't the, even see you, Father. I think I got it right when the pandemic started. So you still have your three musketeers bar there. I do. It's almost. Do the they end. know about that? Let's tell them. Father bought me a three musketeers bar back in the end of January. Something like that. And I we have a little ledge at our kitchen table. So right next to where I always sit on the ledge is that Three Musketeers bar, and it drives him insane <laughs> that it just sits there and I haven't eaten it yet. But I like to see it there, so I know that it's there if I really have a desire for it. But until I have that moment of desire, it just sits there. I have no problem with that. My 
way would be see candy bar, eat candy bar, especially when it's your favorite, as Three Musketeers is your favorite. Yes. This is true, but discipline, I guess. What else do we have? Try, huh? We got a lot of people joining today. So thank you all for joining. So awesome. Mike Montefusco. Fathers in T minus 28 and a oh, half days. I'll be a member of the 30 plus club <laughs> and be able to play hoops with you both. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. T minus 28 and a half days will hopefully be out of quarantine and we can celebrate with you. 30 year old man, registered member of the parish. Welcome aboard. We got to get you to be a Knight of Columbus first, Michael. Then you can join the basketball league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to play with you, buddy. 28 and a half days. Who's counting? You are. Anne Marie Wozniak said, Thank God for this beautiful day. It is beautiful. Gorgeous. Huh? No one loves it more than Fenway. He was doing his uh, sunbathing routine where he's kind of uh, just soaking in the rays and uh, he gets excited when. People have been walking their dog on our beautiful grounds, and he goes right up to the fence and try to makes and tries to make a new friend. Yeah, our our back gate has a little brush under on the bottom, so he can't sneak out, but he can poke his head out there and see who's in the parking lot. So he loves to do that. Michael Argero wants to know Peppies or Sally's, and what topping? It's a great question, Michael. And I'm gonna go. He's gonna go nine off the board. Nine. Can't. It has to be one or the other. I like them all. My favorite is modern, and my favorite topping is pepperoni. Pretty classic. What about you, Father? My favorite New Haven pizza is Sally's, and that goes way back. Uh, good friends of the family when they owned it. Now they don't. They sold it. Uh, and I would say that I like their sausage, pepper, and onions. I mean, yeah. all three are yeah. phenomenal. But their crust is the yeah. best out of all. And our dear friend, Monsignor James Shanley, who's very close friends with Father, uh, his picture is on the wall at Sally's. Yes. Along with a lot of other famous people. So shout out to Monsignor Shanley. That's indeed correct. Okay, we got some suggestions on different ice creams, Father. Ian Moriarty wants to know, what is your take, Father Federico, hmm. on the priest in confession with the young boy on Brock's tail? I watched it based on your recommendation. Oh, nice. Last week we talked about our movies, and I recommended Bronx Tale as my favorite. And she wants to know about the uh, scene in Confession. It's really funny. It's act it's really cute. Uh, little boy goes to Confession, and uh, it's this funny discrepancy about um, – remember, it's in a mafia culture in the Bronx, and uh, the, little, the priest asked the boy, what's the fifth? And the priest is asking him, you know, what's the fifth commandment? And the boy says, you know, I have a right not to uh, incriminate myself. You know, he's thinking, plead the fifth. And the priest mm -hmm. is talking about the fifth commandment. It's really funny. So, again, a shout out to Bronx Tale. I hope you, will, I hope you liked it, Ann. Good watch it. I'm glad you watched it. Michael Lonergan uh, did a little brief reading on the Liturgy of the Hours. And he wants to know, as priests, are you asked to awake in the middle of the night at 2 and 5 for lauds and men? Well, Michael, <laughs> we are not monks. If we were, that would be very difficult for Father Federico. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I enjoy. He would just stay up the whole night. I'm very much a night owl. <laughs> but no, we are not monks. Uh, we are diocesan priests. So we do pray the breviary or the liturgy of the hours five times a day, every day. And as diocesan priests, we make those hours fit into our unique, hectic schedules. Whereas monks and religious sisters living in convents and monasteries, they would pray those hours at set times of the day. But we uh, have a little bit more flexibility. But yes, Father and I pray the breviary five times a day, every day. Sorry, I had to tend to the dog. His toy got stuck under the coffee table. Crisis averted here at 175. <laughs> We're going to be okay, people. The dog got his toy. It's all about Fenway. Yes, I was actually in the church today, as you were, and I brought my breviary over and did there. It's nice. I think it's great that Michael Lonergan is praying with breviary. Wow! Did you see that? <laughs> Put that on Sports Center. <laughs> well, thank you, all you people joining. This is wonderful. Great crowd today for casual conversations. I think people are tuning in because they know we have a major announcement, a very exciting announcement. Not You're yet. not going to get it now. <laughs> not yet. 
Got to keep you in suspense. We'll get to it. Don't I worry. felt that this past Thursday was a bonus, Rachel Kozlowski said. Mass at 10 with Father Romans and at 1 with Father Federico. That's right, because you had the TV mass and I had our daily mass. So thank you. You got both of us. Yeah. We're working hard for you. It was supposed to be Father Federico for both, but uh, he had to do the Bible study. So because we, this week we started our book club and our Bible study. So I took his TV mass and don't take mine. Andrew. It's funny. I haven't yet mastered the uh, art of bilocation. <laughs> to be, I think that comes in the 10th year of priesthood. 10th, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Michael Federico, tell them the story of how I saved your first homily. <laughs> this is a true story from my brother, Michael. Shout out to Mike in Vegas. Um, yeah, when I was uh, ordained a deacon, I was so excited to preach my first homily. And I ran it by my family, as we often do. We practice on our family and friends and get their feedback. And I read the first two sentences and my brother, Michael, who's the kind of guy that just tells it like it is, he doesn't pull any punches. He said, that's boring. And I'd already be not paying attention if I was at church. I'd already be on my phone. I'd already be looking at the bulletin. You already lost me. It sounds like a lecture and I'm asleep. So I rewrote the first words of the homily to make it much more exciting and he said, all right, now I'm interested. Now I want to hear what you have to say. So I used that little method that Michael taught me about the first couple lines has to be really interesting. Otherwise, they're just snoozing themselves. There's, there it is, Mike. Thanks for bringing it up. Mary Ellen Montefusco. I may be wrong, but I would think every priest does a, says a mass every day. Is celebrating a mass considered saying your own personal mass? Great question. The answer is yes because you have your own intention for that Mass. So when we can celebrate, we each have an intention that we're offering that Mass for. So it does count as your own. So on yeah. Sunday, when we, you see us live at 11 a.m., that's our only Mass that day together. We do it together, and that counts for each of us. And, it, and for the intention. For yeah, that brings up the point of, even though we are not having our daily and weekend Masses, the intentions that people have requested are still being honored. Father and I are saying those Masses every day, and on the weekend, so your loved ones are receiving uh, the graces from those masses that you've offered for them. So I'm going to ask a question. Go, Father. And we have more, but I just want to throw this out there. So one of my friends, they have some little kids, and each night at dinner, I don't know if they're doing it during the pandemic because they're together 24-7, but each night at dinner during the course of a normal day, they ask everyone around the table to give their high and their low for that mm. day. So I want to know, Father, your high and your low for this past week. Great. Thanks so much for uh, telling me before we went on live. So I had <laughs> a, a minute to think about it. If you want a minute, we can scroll yeah. through here. I can make a couple comments. Do you have yours? I do, yes. Would you like to go first, Father? No, because I want to hear from <laughs> you first. Uh, my high moment of the week was eating a meal that I have been looking forward to for a long time. Our dear friend, Father Michael Santiago, the pastor of North Haven, uh, which is a wonderful place, I'm told. Uh, he came over and brought with him a delicious rabbit dinner. Rabbit with a side of broccoli rabe and roasted potatoes and fresh bread and dessert from a restaurant in North Haven. We've been planning this for some time. Not for me. I can't eat the little bunny. Father had veal. The baby calf versus the baby bunny, I don't know. But hey, to each his own. I had been really wanting to eat this rabbit, and it was delicious. And we had a great time socializing and being distant, even though we had to be you know, we were distant. But Father Santiago was a great friend. So that was my high moment for the week. And I would say the low moment for the week was um, um, learning about myself um, in such a way that I, I've been talking to a friend of mine. And uh, they pointed out something in my life that I had been doing that I didn't realize that I was doing. So I'm grateful for the kind of friends that can call us out and uh, call us to be our best selves. So that was painful to learn that about myself, but that's how we grow, right? In, in pain, there is growth. So we're all trying to be the best we can, so including us, your priests. So that's my Amen. answer. My high was Wednesday. The whole day, mm -hmm. morning, noon, and night, oh, yes. because we received some good, good news uh, that took great pressure off of my shoulders, 
In the morning, we received word that we got the payroll protection program uh, grant or loan from the Small Business Administration. And that evening, Dr. Nancy Testa accepted the offer to become the next principal of St. Bridget's School. So two bookends to a day that I'll never forget. In my 17 years as a priest, it was one of the highest uh, experiences of my priesthood. The low was having to have a difficult conversation with a friend. So, hmm. wow. um, you know, the, the anxiety that builds up when you know you have to talk mm -hmm. to someone and you don't know how they're going to respond to something. So. It's not easy. Yeah. And I think it make, makes a nice uh, um, point that, you know, when we're up there preaching and we're giving you like practical wisdom about how to live the faith in real life and in the difficult and hard moments, that applies to us too. You know, we are priests for you and we are Christians with you. We're also trying to live the Christian faith, which is difficult. And as we're sharing now, you know, a little bit personally, it's hard, but we're trying our best. And I think we do yeah. our best to try to say in our homilies, we have to. Right. Not you, like yelling or, as if or it's something that it out of you, but it's for all of us. Right. It's not something that we've mastered that we can teach you. It's that we're trying to do this together as right. Christians. Yeah. Here's, stuff, uh, this is not a question. This is a comment, but I, I love it. Let's go. Marissa Smith literally woke up this morning and thought today is casual conversation. Yes, Marissa. Love it. That gets a uh, double thumbs double up thumb and, a, up. and a cowabunga. You'd get two thumbs up if I didn't have the phone in one and Fenway in the other. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Yeah, we, we love casual conversations. Glad that you do too. Joe Valetko was... thanks us for the wonderful phone message. Agnes Barba, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hello, sunshine. Love it. Oh, here comes the jukebox. Oh, here comes the jukebox. He's back. Mike Montefasco, burger, hot dog, or grilled chicken. What's your favorite summer side? Are you in our house? Are you wiretapping our conversation? We literally had that conversation this morning. We just, first <laughs> of all, all we talk about during quarantine is what are we doing for lunch? What are we doing for dinner? And we just said, like 20 minutes before we went live, uh, what do we got in the fridge? And Father goes, what about burgers, hot dog, maybe grilled chicken on the grill? And that's exactly what Mike just suggested. Yeah. So get out of our house. Well, I think he wants to know what our favorite is of those three, Father. Oh, okay. Mine would be a burger. Mine would be grilled chicken. Nice. And your favorite summer side? Baked My, beans. Mine would be macaroni salad. Nice. Corn on the cob. Big weakness for me. Yeah. My mother's macaroni salad that she makes a miracle whip. Mm. Maybe this is why we so have good. 11 cans of miracle this whip. This is right. Uh, <laughs> you ever need sour cream or mayonnaise? You can, you can find, you it, can find it here. Yes. Miracle whip is a weakness. Of me. Very good. What else do we got, Father? Father Federico, you are coming up on your first year anniversary of ordination to the priest. Or what has been the most challenging thing besides the pandemic? Mm you face in your first year of priesthood? Who asked that? Phyllis McNeil. It's a great question. Phyllis Provost. That's right. June 22nd will be here. I, I, I was thinking about this the other night. I cannot believe how fast it's flown by. Yeah, I think I've shared this before, Phyllis. Uh, the most difficult thing for me as a newly ordained priest is learning that the Lord is not asking me to share what I thought that my strengths and talents were. Instead, he's asking me to offer him my weaknesses and my sufferings and to unite them to his cross for the salvation of the world, starting with the conversion and salvation of our own parish. So learning that the priesthood is not about my gifts. It's about my weaknesses and offering my suffering. So that's been a beautiful and difficult lesson from my first year. Great question. Yeah, excellent. Marissa Smith. In the penitential act, why were the, quote, through my faults added? That was to be more true to the Latin text of Mass. So uh, it was there in the Latin. It was there in many uh, Latin-based uh, languages, Spanish and uh, Portuguese, but it wasn't there in the English translation. So the, we became truer to what everybody else was saying. Just like instead of, and also with you, now we say, and with your spirit. Right. In the Spanish churches throughout the world, since they created their mass ritual, said, you come to a spirit, to it with your spirit. So it's not 
Yeah. Not that we're changing any. We're going to what is authentic and true. Getting yeah. back to the roots. Of, I didn't know that. So. Well, now you know. Learn something new every day. Were you in seminary even when they <laughs> came out with the new missile? I think I was uh, sleepy that day. 2011? Uh, no, I started seminary in 13. Yeah. So. Okay. So, yeah, you wouldn't have been interested in it back then. Right. I'm the old guy. Can anyone become a saint? That's got to be from Gabby. Carolina Blyer. Gabby wants to be a saint. Amen. And I she's asking, can anyone become a saint? I think Gabby is going to be the first girl to play in the NHL. And become and a saint. Become a saint. <laughs> saint Gabby of, My the, goal. of the goal crease. She's a goalie. We love her. <laughs> Great yeah. wall, Gabby Blyer. Venerable, venerable Blyer. Yeah. Listen, Gabby. Yes. Everyone is called to be a saint. Everyone is called to be remembered with that ST period in front of their name. It's not just for like priests and popes and nuns and super holy people. All of us are called to that heroic holiness. So yes, Gabby, why don't you become the first saint of Cheshire? I would love that. Very good question from someone so young thinking about these things. I can't tell if this is your brother or your father. No, it's got to be your father, Anthony. Is it true Jesus had a good sense of humor? If so, why not mention much in the Bible? For sure. It's from my dad. I think, Dad, that Jesus' sense of humor is definitely evident in the Bible, but we don't read it that way. We're reading it from our modern lens, and we're not paying attention to the subtle differences of the language and the culture that Jesus lived in. So um, what's a good example? Um, just from this past, uh, recently, Jesus says, uh, uh, look, I'm not a ghost. He's trying to like calm, calm the guys down. You know, relax guys, I'm not a ghost. It's cool, like we can allow Jesus's human personality to speak to us through the words of the gospel. So Jesus is a full human being, which means he has a full human personality. He's also divine. And human beings have the sense of humor, so Jesus did too. Yeah, I would think that it's not highlighted much in the Bible because they're focusing on when he preached and taught and right. performed miracles. So right. it wasn't when he was just hanging out with the disciples and maybe cracking a joke here. Yeah, you know. for sure. Mary Ellen Montefosco, <coughs> do you think that the way we receive communion will change once we are back allowed back to church? You know, Mary Ellen, that's one of those unknowns, huh? You know, if and when we're able to be back in church, will we be able to gather in big numbers like we have here at St. Bridges, Sweden? Or will we have to restrict the numbers? Will, uh, will you have to receive in the hand, most likely in the beginning at least, until there's a vaccine for this virus, I would think. Um, it's going to be highly encouraged, if not required, to receive communion in the hand. So, At the very least, we hope and pray that if even if the way that we receive communion physically changes we want there to be a change in the way that we receive communion from our emotional standpoint we want these days of pandemic to really create a hunger for the eucharist and every time we receive communion from now on we have to really be grateful for it because so many of us have taken the eucharist for granted and now that we can't get to receive jesus it should be like so we should be so excited to receive him again and every time thereafter what else, Father? We're caught up on questions. I'd like to uh, thank our finance council mm -hmm. for the parish. We had a meeting uh, via Zoom, spending a lot of hours each day, as many of you are, I think, uh, on Zoom or Google Classroom or whatever other internet-based uh, conferencing you can do. And uh, thankful to our finance council. We had a meeting on Tuesday to give them an update. At that time, we didn't know that we got the PPP money, so we were giving them an update on where the loan application was. Um, we we're also talking about offertory. As you know, uh, it's one of the burdens of the pastors to be concerned for the temporal and financial stewardship of the parish. And so uh, we did an analysis of March and April of 2019 versus March and April of 2020, and we're down close to $52,000 from last year to this year. And uh, that's primarily because we weren't able to gather in large number for Easter. Um, our collection normally at Easter would be about 50,000. So it's right about where we're at. So uh, those families who have not 
made a donation to the parish since the pandemic started, I strongly ask you to prayerfully consider doing so. Uh, mail it in, drop it off, go online and do it through the internet. Make sure you read our article, uh, our bulletin this weekend. It's available on the parish app. It's available on our website, St. Bridget, stbridgetcheshire.org. Uh, in it, I do explain the analysis of the breakdown of the cost, but also give instructions for how to go online and give financially to the parish to help us out during this difficult time. And, uh, you know, the projects don't stop. The staff is still coming and the bills still need to be paid. So with your help and generosity to the parish family, we'll be able to continue to persevere through this. Amen. Any new questions come up, Father? We got one, Father, from Kiri Corcoran Shaconis. I don't understand why Jesus changed his appearance when he visited the apostles after the resurrection. Do you? That's a great question. I could take a stab at it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Carrie, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, or like in today's first reading from the Daily Mass, when Peter raised Tabitha from the dead, Lazarus and Tabitha came back to, re, uh, to continue their normal human life. They were resuscitated from death, but they were not resurrected. Jesus did not just come back from the dead to resume his normal human life. He was resurrected. It is a different form of existence. It's more glorious. It's more powerful. It's not just waking up from death to continue living again. It's becoming an entirely different kind of being in relationship with the Father. This is why we talk about our glorified bodies. So Jesus would have to look different. Because he wasn't just resuscitated, he was resurrected. Those are two different things. Yeah, but he, he looked different, but he had the markings of his crucifixion. Isn't that interesting? So to show that right. what he endured for our salvation. I love that, Father. It reminds me of a quote that someone said on Twitter recently. Jesus spent so much time showing his followers his wounds after the resurrection, you know, the nail marks. Why do we spend so much time hiding our wounds from him and from mm -hmm. each other? I thought that was beautiful. That's really yeah, good. isn't that good? Was that our friend Meg Hunter? Uh, I don't think so. Bobo? Meg Hunter Kilmer, who's Kilmer. very yeah. insightful, but I don't think so. No. We're getting a shout out from my sister. She okay. says, Hi, father, brother, and uncle. So that's a that's from my sister. So that means hi to my niece Rosalia, who's watching, who says her prayer her prayers beautifully every night, by the way. That's my sister fun. sends me videos of Rosalia saying her prayers before bed nice. to warm my cold, dead heart. <laughs> Agnes Barba, how authentic a translation is consubstantial. I always bristle when I hear it. Why did they change? Again, that is back to the authentic translation of the words in Latin. So that is why it was changed to that. That is the original word. Yes. And then what it was, a, and when we used to say one in being with the father, right. that was the translation. So this it's just getting back to the original. It's going back yeah. to the original. Good question. So we're caught up on questions. Okay. Favorite meal of the week was rabbit. For sure. For you. Yeah, with cheesecake afterwards. And a delicious 20-year-old uh, pork that we've been saving. Oh, yeah. For a special we occasion. very excited about that pork. So good. Yeah. What was your favorite meal of the week? I'll tell you what it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday's lunch. We win. ordered in from a restaurant, and we won't say where. Can't win them all. But we both had a bad meal. That was the first time in a long time we, said we both it. had bad meals. And we were like, man, you know what? I'm in the mood for a cheeseburger. And you were like, I'll get a pulled pork sandwich. Yeah. And it just wasn't good. But you know what? These are this. We have so much to be grateful for. Yeah, yeah. One bad meal is not going to kill you. I think the steaks on the grill the other night was probably my favorite. Yeah, you did a good job. Like, so. um, one of my other highlights of the week was being on Zoom with my family. Oh, that's right. Uh, my oldest brother out in California and his wife and three kids, Riley, Reed, and Piper. And also with my parents, once they managed how to use Zoom. No offense, Mom, I see you shouting out. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Love you. Uh, Mom and Dad have a little trouble with technology. And my brother who lives with them is trying to get them on board, and we are all on it eventually. And we played this game where 
it's kind of like Mad Libs, but online. So it was, it was. Yeah, you shared a couple of yeah, the questions. It was, it was neat. That's cute. But it was cool to see the kids get all excited when they win. I'm sure you. Of course, they always win. I'm sure you let them win. No, you can't. This is computer. Uh, you don't know who okay. picks the uh-huh. answers. It's a neat little. Movie. The phone is still ringing. Shout out to all the people returning our robocall message. We love you. Maybe just uh, just check your message before you call I, us back. I'll tell you, we got one parishioner, Father. Yes, Father. That is bold. I love boldness. Because not only does she think she has the best meatballs, she also thinks her macaroni salad is better than mine. I think I know who this is. Yeah. I mean, and now she's asking, what do you think Jesus' favorite food would oh, be? Oh, Rachel. Rachel Mrs. Not. not. Mrs. She's not from sixth grade. Challenging father on meatballs and macaroni salad. Yeah. We're just going to have to eat our way through this and find out who's the winner. So what was Jesus' favorite food she's asking? Yeah. I would say fish. I would imagine it had to be fish. There's only one example in the Bible of Jesus serving a meal, and he served broiled fish. So that's our best bet. We also know that he was fond of bread. Bread. <laughs> <laughs> bread and wine. Good question, Rachel. What do you think? Let's hear from the people. Not hearing anything. You know what? Can we get some likes and hearts for no reason whatsoever? I just love when they all come flying up. Let's see, people. I don't see any. Wow. They're not listening. Oh, oh, one. (laughs) We got one. There we go. Thank you all. Oh, there they are. We love you guys. (laughs) There you go. That's a lot. (laughs) All right. Do you think we should reveal? What time is it, Father? It is 1.30-ish. Okay. They've been very patient. Two, 1.33. They have been very patient. Do you think it's time to go over the answers that people have posted? Wow, look at all these hearts and likes. I think they earned it now. Uh, yeah, I think. Rose, Rosa Spilka, though, asked a question. We got, oh, can't reveal yet. We have to answer Rosa What's question. your favorite saint or one of your favorite saints? Mm. Wonderful question. And you can find out my favorite saint by tuning in at 1 o'clock on Monday for the learning about your heavenly family. I will be speaking about St. Vincent de Paul. And I did the same for my favorite saint this past Monday, um, St. Maximilian Colby. So thanks for that question, Rosa. And then Victoria posted a question, Father. Yes. How did the book study and Bible study go this week? So we had our first experience of trying to bring our parishioners together through the use of Zoom and uh, I did the book study in the morning and evening on Tuesday. You did the Bible study on Thursday in the morning and evening. And, uh, you know, it was the first session was a little rocky and trying to get people to understand that you can't all talk at the same time. Uh, about halfway through, it seemed to be flowing better. And then in the evening, we, we put out some uh, preliminary rules to live by as we're on this Zoom call together. Uh, Sister Patricia really implemented some rules and it, it worked out very well. Uh, how about Thursday? Similar, you know, we uh, had a smaller session in the morning, which was really great because it was a lot of uh, great conversation. We had a huge session in the evening, which is also great. A lot of different perspectives, but it's a little bit more um, difficult to manage the Zoom. So we're working through it. We'll get better. Here's one. Yeah. For you, Father Romans, from Mike Montefusco. Have you golfed since the pandemic? If so, were carts allowed? (laughs) Michael knows that I enjoy a good round of golf. Uh, No, I have not. Um, In fact, this week I went out to Watertown to do a burial, and that was the first time I left Cheshire, um, apart from one trip to my parents' house since Mm -hmm. March 16th. So, uh, no, I have not played golf, uh, but I did see people playing golf when I was in Watertown. I went up to Mount Olivet Cemetery. And went by the golf course there, and they were out there, and everyone has their own golf cart. So uh, that's got to be really tough on the country clubs or mm. golf courses because you can't share. You normally could have two for a foursome, and now you got to have four, so you can have less people right. probably go out because you only own, own so many golf right. carts. So we own a golf cart. We own a golf cart. You could bring your own. <laughs> the maintenance staff uses it mostly, but yes. Uh, what is Maximilian Colby the patron saint of? Rita Panchard. Oh, 
several things. Uh, he's a patron saint, one of the patron saints of journalists and the media because he used the printing press and the shortwave radio. He's also the patron saint of uh, drug addicts, people who are addicted, because he was killed by lethal injection into his arm. You can see the resonance there. So uh, he's also the one that we would go to if we struggle with our relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary. If for some reason, you know, it's hard for you to relate to Mary or you struggle with her, <laughs> you can go through That's Maximilian because he was so <laughs> devoted to her. Why is that so funny, Father? I'm not laughing at you, Father. I'm laughing at your brother. What is he saying? <laughs> for both of you, what's your biggest pet peeve living with each other? I told you, he just puts it right out there. <laughs> Putting us right out there. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Let's see. So what a beautiful day it is, isn't it? <laughs> Father, Roman, did you notice the uh, beautiful paint job they did in this room? It's very nice. They did they a didn't fantastic mess up at job. All. Beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Love you, buddy. Yeah, we, let's just talk about that for a second. We, you know, it's hard living with people, but you learn to compromise and you learn to get along. You learn what the other person likes and doesn't like. And we're both priests, and uh, I think we we do pretty good. You know, we make time to we intentionally make time to uh, socialize together in the evenings, which is good for our priestly fraternity. But also, it's kind of our way to talk about parish and what we want to what goals we have and what things are working and not working so there's always going to be you know moments that when you live together you just it's not always going to be perfect that's true and all you married people and people and families can say that with each other but i think we do a pretty good job yeah i think it's working so we haven't I'm, killed each I'm other here. been in isolation for what 50 days almost and he hasn't kicked me out into living beckett rectory yet so no yeah I get and i had it cleaned out he thought he was going to get the move <laughs> Uh, Mom, no, I did not visit Father Lish's grave because he's not at Mount Olivet in Watertown. His grave is at All Saints in North Haven. Next time I go there, though, I will visit. I usually do when I go there. Michael's laughing now. Lynn saying living with one person can be difficult. She would know. Carl. <laughs> when there are more than two, it is a bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> and Carolina saying this is a good time to tell us the Fenway news. So Fenway Friday... We revealed something that we were going to reveal today. Yes. Something special that's going to happen Sunday for our parish. And we wanted to kind of tease you and see what you kind of maybe came up with for thoughts. And I've written some of them down, the ones that were submitted. This is so exciting. The big reveal is moments away, people. What were some of the guesses, Father? Sandy Romans. Said you're going golfing. And Carolina Ramirez Blyer said, Father Romans is going to cut Uncle Anthony's here and broadcast it live. Hmm. You wish. Well, I don't know, Father. Can you really go three more weeks? Father, my hair is out of control. It is. It's so curly. Like if you didn't have the whole can of gel in there. <laughs> it takes two cans of gel every day to keep it down because it's so powerful right now. Carolina, sorry to tell you. Wrong. Deborah Anastasio, planting a vegetable garden. Waterfall for the pond, turning on the waterfall for the pond at St. Thomas Beckett. Not a bad guess. That would have been good. Uh, Ellen Tyne, May Crowning. That would have been a good guess, too, for Sunday of May, dedicated to the Blessed Mother. But uh, there was one that got it right. You ready? Go, Father. Is there a drum roll? Ellen Tyne, her second guess, which was really her first, but I said it second. Parking lot adoration. Woo! We're coming together, people, in a socially distant way. Sunday, from 2 to 4, in our parking lot, you are Behind all invited to drive your cars, not to get out of them, but we will be exposing Jesus in the Eucharist on a makeshift stage that we have concocted for two hours. So you're welcome to come and adore the Lord in person without leaving your car. 
but it will be cool, a cool way for us to be together. A shout out to Sean Strollo for donating the use of his uh, flatbed truck mm -hmm. that will be arriving this afternoon. And we're going to put out an altar and expose the blessed sacrament. We're going to ask those in smaller cars to stay towards the stage facing the school and those in SUVs to be farther right. back. So you're not blocking, you know, so there's a equal, even uh, eye level. Right. Yeah. So you're, don't you're, want an SUV in the front row and a little Prius behind you. You're like you know? <laughs> Christo Stuno with that gigantic SUV. That's right. You should probably right. go in the back row. Christo. That's right. So we're just going to ask you all to uh, be mindful that you need to stay in your cars. Do not exit your car for whatever reason. Uh, but you can come for five minutes as a family. You can come for 15, 20, 30, 50, whatever you want. It's going to be there. The Blessed Sacrament exposed before you from 2 to 4 tomorrow. Come, don't miss it. Come, let us adore him. As oh, they said. Come, let us adore him. There it is, Father. The big news. Outdoor big adoration. Helen Time guessed it. So, Helen, you know what you win? You win a round of applause from Father and I. Congratulations. We hope to see you there. We also have something else to... Uh, end our broadcast with today we do is it time for that is it time do we have any more questions i don't know I was wow let's time to see we're getting a lot of great feedback about our outdoor adoration are we sandy thomas is loving it <laughs> lynn thank you lynn oh my goodness that's amazing from rosa spilka christine norton wow sandy romans wow great rita pancha yahoo wish we were there oh they're in south they're Carolina, away, right yeah but we might be able to live stream it. We could live stream it for a little while. Yeah, sure. For a little bit. We won't do it for the whole two right. hours. Yeah. Chris Carrie Chaconis, that's pretty awesome. Carolina, that's so exciting. Thank you. Sister Mary Grace Walsh, the provost of the Archdiocese, a wonderful plan. Yeah. We think so too. That's some good <laughs> Yeah, we've been we've been talking about it for a few weeks. And uh, the other night we were out on the porch uh, after dinner just talking and I said, what are we waiting for? Let's just do it. Let's see if we can get a truck. So we called Dee Ferry. She's watching. Uh, she owns Mad Tents, and she's on our finance council. And we thought maybe she had a stage. Uh, but she said, no, just get a flatbed trailer or something like that. So I, then I called Sean, and he immediately said, yes, uh, whatever you need, Father. He's such a faithful parishioner. And uh, then we re remembered that we had a speaker system with a microphone that we could put out there. It's pretty good. That was donated to the school a few years ago. And uh, Matt got the altar, and we're good to go. We're ready to go. Of course, we always have the Blessed Sacrament in the church. So, Yeah, he's That'd always nice. There. He's always there. Yeah. Sunday, 2 to 4. We'll see you there. So uh, you want to do this little well, prayer? Then? You want to say something about the acts of kindness? Oh, the acts of kindness, yeah. The acts of kindness. So the RCIC is a Hartford, as you know, in the – Easter season, we're focusing on reading in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, the early disciples, and the acts that they were performing to spread the good news and to spread the message of Jesus. Uh, so the Archdiocese is trying to look for the acts of kindness that are going on throughout the Archdiocese during these uh, days of pandemic, but also in this Easter season. So if you're doing something and it's making a difference in other people's lives, they would like to hear about it. So visit archdiocesearhartford.org. Go to Acts of Kindness, and you can upload a picture or a video and send it in to them, and they'll be sharing it on their social media. It's really cool. I think we did um, Beyond the Bulletin this past week was about that, uh, just tying it in that there's a lot of Acts of Kindness going on, even our own school using the 3D printers mm. to make those extenders and adapters for the masks that people have to wear every day. So uh, a lot of people are sewing masks, right. donating them everywhere, so things like that. Yeah, very exciting. Send in your acts. We'd love to see our parish represented when the Archdiocese presents this multimedia story. Uh, we want to see a lot of our people on there. So, Father, another thing that came to mind that we could talk about in the time that we have left is uh, your experience today in church. Um, you saw a family that you knew was grieving. And yeah. you're, as a priest, you wanted to minister to them in a more particular way? Yes, so it's a family uh, that I've known since I came here, so six years this May, uh, and they're involved and seen their son grow up. He's now in college, and uh, 
the mother in this family lost her mother mm-hmm. up in Buffalo. And I saw them come in and I expressed from a socially distant stance my condolences. I had heard about because you told me last night that they had called the office to ask us to pray for her. Um, so I extended my condolences. I would normally have gone over, you know, consoled them and talked to them for a while, but you can't in this time right now, anyway. Uh, and then I just observed them, you know, as a family sitting there before the Lord, and, you know, can tell that they were really moved to be in the presence of the Lord. And my heart was aching that I couldn't go over there and offer more consolation and comfort in this time that I know that they're hurt. But it is what it is. Yeah. And you had something similar it was yesterday? Was yesterday, it? yeah. Um, I did my second anointing now of a person dying from the coronavirus. And in both occasions, I had was instructed by the medical people to not enter the room, even though as a priest... This is what I wanted to do to get in there and to anoint the person with the sacrament and to be present with them. But it's just simply not the most prudent thing to do, especially since uh, the PPE is very scarce and uh, it's more appropriate that it would go to a medical professional, I think. So with that being said, we got a little bit creative and I went around the building and said the prayers of the dying over the person through the window. Um, This is the second time I've done this and when I got to the final prayer of the prayers of the dying, I got real choked up because the words are so powerful. It's go forth Christian soul from this world to meet almighty God, God, the father who created you, God, the son who redeemed you God the spirit who dwells within you. And when I realized the finality of our lives on earth, and here I am in a window with a mask on, like, praying through a window to this person who's dying. I I, I just was so grateful for my priesthood, but also there was a a pain of not being able to really be in there, but this is part of the pandemic. Similar to what you had. Right. It's not easy to minister in these times. Good thing we're going to end with some good news after this somber note. We are. But I also want to say a shout out to Victoria. She's always on her game. Isn't she great? She has already posted the link to the Archdiocese for the Acts of Kindness. So if you're watching this, Pat McKinley, you're telling us that the parish is still providing 150 sandwiches every Thursday to St. Vincent de Paul Shelter. So click on that link and share that with the Archdiocese. That'd Thanks, Pat. Shout out to you and to the sandwich ministry. Victoria, people. always great job. <clears throat> so this past week, uh, Archbishop Gomez, from the Los, uh, Archdiocese of Los Angeles, uh, also president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, um, decided that he was going to reconsecrate the United States to the Blessed Mother under the title Mary, Mother of God. And Archbishop Blair, in union with him, consecrated the diocese to Mary yesterday. They, they both took place yesterday. We figured, as we are here together on Casual Conversation Saturday, that we would end today by consecrating our parish to the Blessed Mother under the title Mother of the Let's Church. Go. And Victoria has posted the prayers. They're pinned to the comments so everyone can join along as we as we make this consecration to Our Lady. So let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When our risen Lord appeared to his disciples on Easter Sunday, he said, Peace be with you. We can be confident that he desires this same peace for all the members of his body, the Church, and for the people of the entire world. In this difficult time, we turn to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church and Queen of Peace, to ask that she intercede with her son for all those who are affected in any way by this pandemic. As we renew the consecration of our country and ourselves to the Mother of the God, we implore her maternal care for her children. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son is he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exalting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, 
Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Recalling Jesus' words as he hung on the cross, Behold your mother. We meditate on the fifth sorrowful mystery of the rosary, the crucifixion and death of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive, forgive us our sins, sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Let us now entrust our country and ourselves once again to the Virgin Mary's care. Most holy Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, you are the fairest fruit of God's redeeming love. You sing of the Father's mercy and accompany us with a mother's love. In this time of pandemic, we come to you. Our, sure, our sign of sure hope and comfort. Today, we renew the act of consecration and entrustment carried out by those who have gone before us. With the love of a mother and handmaid, embrace this parish which we entrust and consecrate once again to you, together with ourselves and our families. In a special way, we commend to you those particularly in need of your maternal care. Mary, health of the sick, sign of health, of healing, and of divine hope for the sick, we entrust to you all who are infected with the coronavirus. Mary, Mother of Consolation, who console with a mother's love all who turn to you, we entrust to you all those who have lost loved ones in the pandemic. Mary, help of Christians who come to our rescue in every trial, we entrust to your loving protection all caregivers. Mary, Queen and Mother of Mercy, who embrace all those who call upon your help in their distress, we entrust you all who are suffering in any way from the pandemic. Mary, Seed of Wisdom, who were so wonderfully filled with the light of truth, we entrust you all who are working to find a cure to this pandemic. Mary, Mother of Good Counsel, who gave yourself wholeheartedly to God's plan for the renewing of all things in Christ, we entrust you all leaders and policy makers. Accept with the benevolence of a mother the act of consecration that we make today with confidence and help us to be your son's instruments for the healing and salvation of our country and the world. Mary, mother of the church, you are enthroned as queen at your son's right hand. We ask your intercession for the needs of this country, that every des desire for good may be blessed and strengthened, that faith may be revived and nourished, 
hope sustained and enlightened, charity awakened and animated, guide us, we pray, along the path of holiness. Mary, our mother, bring everyone under your protection and entrust everyone to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we conclude this consecration, we ask the blessing of Almighty God. Let us pray. Bestow the grace of your kindness upon your supplicant people, O Lord, that formed by you their creator and restored by you their sustainer. Through your constant action, they may be saved. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. As is customary, we conclude our prayer with a Marian hymn. Regina Shelly, Letare, Alleluia. Qui aqua meru is deportare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut exit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deo, Alleluia. Does that not just make your heart smile? That's a beautiful way to end our prayer and our time together today. Thank you to the Atwoods for coming in and singing that beautiful hymn. To Julia and her children, we thank you very much. Well, Father, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Are we Mr. Rogers now? <laughs> <laughs> I see Jeffrey and Anthony. <laughs> yeah, it's been a good casual conversation. We are coming at you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. for Good Shepherd Sunday, live Mass at 11. My homily from 3.15 this morning. Father was awakened by the Holy Spirit in the middle of the night to completely redo his homily. So we'll be hearing it tomorrow at 11. And then join us at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4 in our back parking lot at St. Bridget Campus for two hours of Eucharistic adoration live together from your cars. Exciting stuff happening Yes, we hope to see you. You don't have to come for the whole time. Come for a few minutes, whatever you can, to spend time before the Eucharistic Lord and offer him your praise and thanks for all his blessings in your life. Until next week, I'm Father Romans. I'm Father Federico. Fenway is asleep, so don't be too loud when you sign off. And we ask God's blessings upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>